Our brain is not this fixed mass that we have been born with. It can actually be transformed. This new book that I read filled me with ideas about how I could transform my brain. Hello, my name is Abhijit Bhaduri and I am going to talk to you about my opinion about this lovely book that I read called The Extended Mind by Annie Murphy Paul. The first place to begin is that the brain is not what you think it is. As a kid, I once climbed up a tree to take a close look at the abandoned nest of a bird. This nest was built out of many different things, dry leaves, twigs, pieces of cloth, cotton, and even two pieces of electric wires. Yes, that's right, electric wires. And this bird's nest is a great way to understand the human brain. It is not like the hard disk of your laptop. It is extendable. That is, the brain is extendable, much like the use of external drives that we use to extend the storage of the laptop. Now, Annie Murphy Paul has been writing about what makes us who we are. This seems to be a mystery that really engages her. Her previous book, The Cult of Personality Testing, showed how popular personality tests like MBTI, MMPI, these are being wrongly used in custody battles and even while hiring people. For example, the Rochard's ink blot test, despite its severe limitations, is now still being used in granting parole and almost half of the psychologists who do child custody evaluation, they use it. Well, back to this whole book called The Extended Mind. There are many ways to extend your mind. And in this book, Annie talks about three big ways in which we can transform our thinking. She uses tons of scientific research to show that we think best when we think with our bodies, our spaces and our relationships. For example, the gestures of the hands, the space of a sketchbook, the act of listening to someone tell a story or the task of teaching someone else. All of them really are ways to extend our mind. Let's begin by examining using the body, space, and people. Annie uses three fields of study to support her case. The first field is embodied cognition, which explores the role of the body in our thinking. The second field is situated cognition, which examines the influence of place in our thinking. And the third is distributed cognition, which probes the effects of thinking with others. Making hand gestures increases the fluency of our speech and deepens our understanding of abstract concepts. Using hand gestures to clarify, specify, and even elaborate on our speech can improve the audience's comprehension. Physical exercise works wonders for improving the understanding of abstract concepts. Oh, and here is a little tip. When you're on Zoom, Make sure your hand gestures are visible because when we speak or teach a class on Zoom, it is only the speaker's face that is visible. But if the audience can also follow the speaker's gestures, they not only feel more engaged, but the speakers who use hand gestures also speak more fluently, try it out. The space where we work is the next idea that I borrowed from this book, that different tasks need to be performed in different kinds of workplaces. Connecting with other teams, the rooms to take virtual meetings or phone booths, and using quiet spaces to focus can dramatically impact our productivity. So there are almost eight kinds of activity-based spaces. Open offices do not increase collaboration. Research has in fact found that employees have fewer and far more superficial work-related conversations in open offices because they are wary of discussing delicate matters in the open. As employers cautiously reopen offices, they may want to explore how the same space can be remodeled to reflect different activity patterns. But for me, the most powerful segment of the extended mind lies in the last segment, how we think with experts, peers and groups, and this can really shape our thinking. Here are a few ideas I loved and connected with. First. Copy the expert. I learned to draw by copying the cartoons of the late R.K. Lakshman. I have also taught myself by imitating artists like 
Mario Miranda and Ajit Nainan. I used to spend hours trying to replicate the drawings of Satyajit Ray. While my drawings are not great, but certainly it was good enough to get me started. Different sectors can copy the practices of other industries solving similar problems. Let's take for example airlines and hospitals. They have routinely taught each other how to make aeroplanes and hospitals safer. For instance, the sterile cockpit rule forbids pilots from engaging in conversation unrelated to the immediate business of flying when the plane is below 10,000 feet. Now the hospitals have learned from this and they have also created no interruption zone around medication preparation areas. The nurses who are administering medication often wear special vests or sashes signaling that they are not to be disturbed. This book, The Extended Mind, has just been released and I strongly recommend that you get hold of a copy for yourself because this book is packed with ideas that have been proven with deep scientific research. Don't forget to check out her website and follow her on Twitter.